Family and friends of Brittany Drexel held a celebration of life in her honor today. The childlike teenager went missing in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina in April 2009. Police say Raymond Moody confessed to kidnapping, raping and killing the teenager last month, leading investigators to her remains 30 miles from where she was taken. Her loved ones now able to say their final goodbyes. <laughs> Family and friends of Brittany Drexel emotional as they gather at the father's house Saturday in Rochester. The best thing I could have done is, is protect these guys. Sorry. Brittany's stepdad Chad Drexel remembers Brittany as strong minded and fearless, but most importantly, independent. She taught me so much as growing up as a dad and now being a papa, the little one, it's like I don't want to do that, but sometimes Marissa gets overwhelmed and she needs that help. So I'm hopeful I'm using that knowledge to help her with my little one. Marissa Drexel, Brittany's younger sister, wrote a letter recounting their shared memories, encouraging people to remember her sister as the person she was before she went missing. From the day I was born, you have always been my protector, and I know you still are. Then when I couldn't sleep one night, you didn't hesitate to let me just come lay my head on your chest while we talked about our day. These nights are the nights I cherish and miss the most and wish I could do just one more time. Britney's friend Selena reminisced on the nicknames Britney would give and the kindness she showed others then and now in spirit. She would always go out of her way to be there for anyone, no matter what it took. And then she would never ask for anything in return. Everything going on in today's world, I believe Britney came back when we all needed her the most. She always showed a different perspective in life, but her soul always still sends a ripple effect of kindness in the best way. And as Dalton Williams shares with us, local residents and businesses are fed up with the violence in the community. Dalton. This marks the 30th homicide of the year, and the folks I spoke with today tell me they're disappointed with the rise in crime, but the city wasn't always like this. Kim Reed owns the hair salon Blue Marble on East Ave and has been at her current location for about five years, influenced by the popular area. This is a really diverse area, and I'm loving the amount of development that has happened over the past several years. That's another reason why I relocated to this neighborhood. Tareem Sack was born and raised in Rochester and says it's hard not even feeling safe in his own hometown at times. You just don't feel safe anymore, like anywhere. Um, you know, you hear shootings all over the place, but... Uh, especially recently, like upstate, especially, it's uh, it just hits too close to home. But with the recent rise in crime, it's caused him to modify his plans or even rethink coming to the area at all. It's kind of harder to be safe out here, and uh, I'm, I'm, it definitely affects my plans because I feel more inclined to stay in. Reed says she used to enjoy being in the area at night, but now says she's taking extra steps to ensure her safety and the safety of her storefront. I don't stay here on the weekends at night anymore. I just don't. I leave my lights on in my business now at night because I want to deter people from having a place to do nefarious things in the back streets and things like that. Um, yeah, I get out of here. I'm out of here by 11 for sure. She fears that if this rise in violence and crime continues, it could have a negative impact on her business and send a negative message about the neighborhood. I feel like it's going to make it hard to do business here because I think the public perception is that it's not safe. And if people don't feel safe, they're not going to come here. Both Sack and Reed say they are calling on the city to increase the police presence in the area, hoping that that helps curb this rise in violent crime.